name is David Boyer. Um, I'm a adjunct clinical professor at USC Keck School of Medicine in Los Angeles and a partner at Retina Ventures Associates Medical Group in Los Angeles. I'm, I'm very pleased to be able to present uh, today on photomodulation. Photomodulation uses different wavelengths of light to stimulate different aspects of the pigment epithelium um, to allow for uh, improvements in inflammation and to, we found that it also reduces drusen volume. So this study um, was done so that patients receive nine treatments between week three and five. Uh, so three treatments basically a week and they were followed uh, and retreated every four uh, months and the, the study uh, endpoint was at 13 uh, months. And essentially it showed an improvement in patients who had dry macular degeneration. These were patients who had intermediate macular degeneration, who did um, not have any form of therapy available, but were having problems with reading and having some degree of decreased vision. So the treatment was able to get an improvement of a little over five letters of vision in the treated group. And if you look at the group of patients who received uh, sham treatment, sham treatment was a reduction in the amount of light that was given, but not an absolute uh, absence of light. They um, had about a three letter improvement. But if you look at the group of patients who did not have any lights and they were the opposite eyes, of patients who were receiving active treatment, they lost two letters over this period. So the, the difference between the group that had no treatment and the group that was actively getting treated was, was fairly large. Uh, in addition, there are some secondary things that we looked at. Drusen are a hallmark of macular degeneration, uh, dry macular degeneration. Uh, the Drusen volume in these patients actually reduced um, so that we saw a, an improvement overall, but it, you know, a caveat that everybody should know, Drusen can come and go, but overall in the study, there was a definite decrease overall in the Drusen volume in the patients who received the active treatment. There also was a reduction in geographic atrophy. There were not a lot of patients, but however, the incidence of forming geographic atrophy during the study was very low in the patients receiving therapy as the control group did have a much higher incidence. And this is something that we really need to look at because geographic atrophy or an absence of tissue in certain areas causes what we call scotomas or blind spots so that the patients really can't see in those areas. So if we're able to reduce the formation of this, we can actually reduce overall visual loss associated with dry macular degeneration. And though we always think that wet macular degeneration is the only one that causes visual loss, dry can lead to decreased vision. You certainly Patients who I see have a very difficult time. They need more light. They can't read unless they have light coming over their shoulder, which is a simple treatment, but is very, very helpful. Um, they have difficulty in getting around and driving at night. And these things hopefully can be improved overall. So um, the study was positive and it gave us some hope that there may be something here that we will be able to utilize in the future. I think larger studies uh, looking at this will be necessary to really confirm these early findings. Are there plans to take this study further? If so, what are the next steps? I, I think there are a lot of unanswered questions. I think that we would like to know, we'd like to be able to find biological uh, markers so that we have a better idea of the response. Um, there are certain treatments that you really don't see any biological effect. So we really would like to hone in on that. And there have been uh, doctors at the Cleveland Clinic um, who have really delved into this. So I'm hoping that they will be able to look at the uh, EZ zone or the outer retinal elements to see if they can determine a change either in the thickness of the photoreceptor layer or changes in Brooks membrane or changes in, you know, again, in Drusen volume and Drusen height. So I think that there's a lot of material that still needs to be evaluated. I do feel, however, that you know we have a basis here. At least we have some positive data for the first time in treating a, a virtually untreatable group of patients. So I'm hoping that they will do further studies. They're going to do an extension study 
right now, which will allow us to get two-year data rather than the one-year data that we have, because this is an ongoing disease, and though we have improvements in one year, we'd like to see if they continue or actually get better over a two-year period. How can patients get involved in the trial? Well, the study it, it is ongoing, but we're not enrolling new patients at this moment. There probably will be ongoing you know, studies in the future, and, and the treatment it, it does have a C mark and is being done in Europe and is getting similar results to what we did in, you know, in the Lighthouse study in the United States. Have there been any negative side effects? There were really no side effects. Um, you know, it's a tedious process because, you know, they do get three treatments a week for three weeks, or a total of nine treatments. Um, but the treatment was well tolerated. There didn't seem to be any discomfort from the treatment. There didn't seem to be any dryness or any signs of phototoxicity, which is obviously wonderful. Um, but again, you know, a small study, you know, with very encouraging results, but, you know, you have to be cognizant of the fact that, you know, larger studies and looking at it in depth to really make sure that this, these results can be duplicated in a larger study are necessary. What is the name of this study if people would like to get more information or follow it? It's called the Lighthouse Study, Lighthouse 3. There have been other studies that have looked at photomodulation. Photomodulation is used in, in other areas of medicine. and It's used to for wound healing. It's, there are a lot of things coming out now that red wavelength or maybe even the blue wavelength may be good for myopia. So there are, uh, this is a, in ophthalmology it's relatively new, but um, in at least in other parts uh, of medicine, this type of treatment has been found to be helpful. So again, it's the Lighthouse 3 study, um, but again, it's closed at this time, and you know, patients who are in the sham group will be um, converted over, but uh, we'd like to see if we can duplicate that long term.